All right, hello. Uh, we had a little absence, but now two in a row. Uh, and I'm lucky to be here hanging out on this Friday, uh, still kind of morning, with uh, Mick and Stelios, who are the uh, co-founders <laughs> and uh, people behind Geyser. That was my best opportunity at pronouncing the name. I hope I did all right. Um, and they are um, building a really cool uh, transformative way that uh, creators and um, people can fund their projects, ideas, movies, uh, et cetera, some good starting use cases uh, built on and around Bitcoin uh, with, obviously it's a 100% uh, lightning company. And um, is just a really cool uncensorable sort of way, especially in light of the recent events that happened uh, or are happening all around the globe. And maybe we can chat about that in a little bit. Um, so I'm going to let these two people introduce themselves. Um, Mick, how about yourself? Great, great to be here. Thanks so much, Mike. Um, yeah, so I am uh, Mick, uh, CEO and co-founder of Geyser.fund and sorry, Geyser uh, around yeah, a year ago. Um, my background is in UX, UI design, um, uh, did a lot of years working in the fin fintech space and the crypto space as well around plus four years, plus four or five years. Um, and sort of my passion is really helping. I've also been in Bitcoin for since 2016 and uh, been a Bitcoiner since then. And my passion is trying to bring really the uh, uh, end user use cases uh, to uh, the world of Bitcoin. So essentially trying to really show the, the power of Bitcoin, the fact that it's sort of this borderless, um, censorship resistant, um, sort of neutral money, this open network that can be used, that can enable value to be transmitted through through time, not only through space, but also through time. So trying to create with Geyser a crowdfunding platform that is entirely borderless, that can be accessible to everyone uh, and can create this sort of new global community of, of value, of, of exchange. Uh, through through value through money, so really excited about this. Uh, met Stelios around two years ago, became friends, and then um, obviously through Bitcoin Twitter. And then uh, after that, after a year, I pitched him the idea of doing Geyser, and we then uh, have been working tirelessly uh, uh, on Geyser since then. And I let uh, Stelios introduce himself. Yeah. So hi, I'm I'm Stelios. I'm the other co-founder of geyser my background is more technical so i come from the field of data science actually previously um and that did not really align with my values so when i discovered bitcoin i was really happy to see that there was a, a field of technology which i think technology by the way is the best way to bring humanity forward and so i've always been looking for, for ways to do that that we think technology and bitcoin was one of those ways that i found which immediately got me hooked and that was around 20, 2017, uh, 2016. And then about two years later, I got uh, introduced into Lightning. And that got me hooked again. Uh, as a builder, I just love the fact that you could build on a permissionless, uh, easy to use payment layer that was built on top of what I still believe is the best money we have uh, and the best foundation to build both an application and a business. So that's a little bit about me. All right, cool. So let's jump right in here. Um, in like two minutes or less, can you give us a 30,000 square foot uh, overview of what Geyser is and uh, the problems that you're set out uh, to solve? Awesome. Sounds good. We'll try it. So we started Geyser, I guess, to start off with, uh, with, with how it originated, because we noticed there was so much activity happening on Bitcoin and the Lightning space. So many people with ideas, artists, creators, but even developers that had these you know, uh, ideas and often wanted to jump into the Bitcoin space and kind of dedicate their life to Bitcoin. And uh, there wasn't really a way for them to um, to to kind of get people on board and supporting their project. Like I personally wanted to support a lot of uh, artists that were doing things and there was no easy way for me to do that or to keep track of that uh, donation. 
uh, or to be able to be rewarded for donating uh, and, and therefore creating like a, a sort of um, a, a way to be engaged with the creator. And so we thought, okay, for that, really, we need a platform, a crowdfunding platform, a bit like Kickstarter, where people can submit uh, their donations, get something back for them, uh, but also more than Kickstarter, a bit something a bit more like Substack, where creators can keep uh, their communities up to date and actually create community. So what we're, call, what we're creating here is really a crowdfunding platform for creators and communities. Keeping communities engaged, super important, and the tools that come with that. Okay, so let's talk about the campaigns versus grants. Um, can you explain both of these, both of these sort of products and, um, and, and how they look? Yeah, definitely. Um, so Geyser uh, campaigns, which we're now moving to call, calling them projects, uh, are uh, really just like, at the moment, they're really just static pages, a bit like Kickstarter. And in the next coming weeks, you'll notice some really big changes. So it, it, they'll be a lot more dynamic. So as a creator, you'll be able to actually uh, not just create this project, but actually create posts within the project, a bit like Substack, you can write articles. People will be able to subscribe to these projects, get emails every time you write a post and uh, some a new update has has, has arisen. Um, and so what happens is that it really turns out into a, a place where um, any Bitcoin creator can kind of keep their community up to date, whether you're a movie producer and you maybe have some new interviews with uh, uh, Michael Saylor or or something like that, or you have a, this guy here, a heroes developing a Bitcoin game, uh, a Game Boy game uh, related to creating a story around Bitcoin. So he still, you know, has like a year as has still a, a year of work to do. So by uh, creating posts and updates, he can keep keep his community up to date, um, um, and essentially get, get keep keep on getting support from the community. Um, he'll also be able to add rewards so that people can uh, purchase essentially the game on Geyser as well. So Geyser really becomes the to go platform, almost like uh, the website tool for uh, for everything you you kind of need to get a project going so it's really trying to support the the, the ecosystem the of, of bitcoin creators to keep on building and doing stuff on bitcoin so as you can see here we have a lot of prominent bitcoiners from anita to paco de la india and we have this uh, bitcoin uh, uh you know three three at the moment bitcoin documentaries and we also have more like uh, in the works that are going to be launching so this is this is in regard to the projects and uh, our, our aim for projects again uh, is to make them more dynamic to have uh, posts uh, and even potentially enter integrate a chat system so it's really a play for community to be born to to, to emerge within these individual projects um that's sort of the idea within within the projects and there, again there can be it's because it's all sort of mo modelized there are there we could, can keep on adding more and more features that just make communities uh, exist and be born. Like, for example, I heard this really good comment uh, regarding potentially adding polls so that as a creator, you want to ask questions and feedback to your community. So like, uh, can I add a poll and ask my community questions? Um, so that could certainly be, be another option. Uh, and um, yeah, and when it comes to the grant system, it's, it's trying to partner with Bitcoin companies with uh, wealthy Bitcoiners to essentially provide like a way to uh, funnel funds towards Bitcoin creators. So we just uh, uh, we, we managed to, to get around three Bitcoin to give out as grants to the Bitcoin community. We just had our first Bitcoin grant, the first round in which we donated one Bitcoin and we had a pretty big uh, turnout. We had more than 80 applications uh, and these are educators, people that are building Bitcoin culture through movies, documentaries, um, and also Bitcoin builders that are doing developing software in mostly open source types of way. And so we had more than 80 applicants of which we selected 45. And of these 45, we have given out one Bitcoin. So we had a pretty big turnout. We had more than 170 likes uh, and three, three, uh, almost, almost, uh, almost 70 retweets in total. Uh, and yeah, it kind of really shows how, how important this was for the Bitcoin community, a way to funnel support to those who are creating. 
I think it's probably worth noting that it, uh, uh, several other crypto ecosystems like Ethereum, uh, crowdfunding is a very, very vital component. We can criticize Ethereum as much as we want, but we can definitely see that um, the crowdfunding platforms like Mirror, like um, uh, like Jitcoin have been a key groundwork for helping to develop this ecosystem of creators, of builders, of uh, educators in their space as well. And we, we want to do something similar, uh, but on, on sound principles of, of Bitcoin. Okay, cool. So can anyone start a campaign now? Um, I know that, uh, you know, there's some great things out there that come to mind. There's this, you know, new Austin Bitcoin Design Club. There's the African Bitcoin conference. There's all these kind of unique, cool projects that are very important. Um, can anyone just sign up on the platform and start taking donations and interacting uh, with um, funders and contributors? Uh, what's the status of it right now? That is definitely the vision. So at the moment, we have about 100 projects uh, that are waiting to be launched on, on Geyser that have signed up to launch their project. Um, and our approach has been to take it a bit more slowly and to really focus on the UX and focus on the experience that we, we provide and understand the feature sets that would add value to the creators. And now we feel that we're, we're reaching a point where we're more comfortable and more confident um, that we understand better what the creators need. And therefore, in the coming weeks, we'll be opening up the platform to anyone. And then we'll move on to the stage of making it as easy and as accessible for people that may not have as much of a technical background to launch their campaign um, or their project on Geyser. So to begin with, project creators will be required to run uh, their own nodes uh, and we'll facilitate that through uh, using Voltage. And the next stage going from there will be to leverage um, a technology called Lightning Addresses, which essentially looks like an email um, and it would be of the format project name at geyser.fund, um, but they could use their Albi address or they could use a MASH address and then they could enter that in the creation flow and the, the funds would be directed immediately to that lightning address. So it's peer to peer. We're not interfering or interacting with the payment part. We're not custodial, uh, we'll remain non-custodial. And that lightning address will allow them to create a project much more easily without being technically savvy, without needing to run their own node or managing their own liquidity, um, but using existing uh, technologies. Okay, so you brought up something that uh, we had a question uh, from our group that I was gonna get to later, but might as well now. So this seems like a issue. Uh, the question is, why do you need a node for a campaign on Geyser? This seems like right now it's not easy to run a campaign for everyone. Um, is that some pretty consistent feedback or how are you guys viewing that? Yeah, that's that's correct. I mean, uh, as Stelio said, our, our plan is to eventually make it as easy as possible. And so I think in the coming really couple of months it, it'll be like so easy that you, all you need is a lightning address um but yeah our, our our approach was to make it as kind of start off with something that was um um kind of uh, uh, kind of essentially allows essentially the, the the censorship resistant element but our approach is to make it uh, increase the accessibility as much as possible it's just that when you look at the current functionality needed to make it accessible you have to make some compromises uh, and also there's issues around like the custody, like we don't want to remain custodians, we want to want to be able to, to freeze funds. Uh, we also don't want to be able um, uh, to, there's also like uh, trade-offs when it comes to integrating with existing solutions out there. So uh, we're looking very deeply at that and that's exactly our aim is to make it like with a click of a button, you create a project uh, without even needing to worry about whether you have a node or even whether you have a lightning address. That's sort of where we want to get to. And so perhaps somebody... just to add, go ahead. Just to add a small element to that um, and emphasize something that Mick was mentioning, we are definitely seeing this as being a spectrum that different people will fall on different parts of the spectrum in terms of being able or willing 
or needing to run a non-custodial um, node and run a non-custodial campaign. So the way we're seeing that is we want to eventually cover the entire spectrum, starting with what we believe is really important, being the non-custodial element and the censorship resistant element, and moving towards the other, the other end to make it accessible to, to everyone. So a lot of these crowdfunding uh, legacy platforms, Indiegogo, Kickstarter, uh, I don't know, GoFundMe, Patreon, I mean, they all have um, a variety of flavors. Um, some of them you have to actually hit a goal um, in order for the funding to happen. And then if it gets, you know, 65% completed in X amount of time, uh, it doesn't happen and everyone would get their money back. Um, how do you guys feel about that model versus what you're doing? I mean, there really are no kind of thresholds or, or, or deliverables here, right? I mean, if somebody's making a Bitcoin wallet or this video game, um, really, are you just depending on the goodwill of the community to help see these projects through or what, what sort of guarantees are in place at all? Yeah, really good question. And it really goes to the, the, the hard question here is a question of trust. Like, do you trust uh, a, a creator uh, and what, you know, to what extent and can you actually uh, fund the creator? So the, the, the model of Kickstarter is like you have one month crowd to the crowdfunding campaign. If you reach a final goal, um, if you reach a final goal, then you can um, you can get the funds if you don't reach a goal. Uh, the funds go back to the funders, right? So that's sort of the, the model. So we're relying on a very, very different, we're, like, we're actually twisting the, um, the question around and we're saying, no, trust is something that you don't get by default. It's something you need to work for and it takes time. So rather than making that crowdfunding campaign um, um, only one month long, it's something that just keeps on going. And guess what? You know, by, by doing work on your project, you will, with time, develop that relationship with your community you will do the work proof of work you will um, uh, increasingly get support for an idea that uh, it's deemed to be valuable if it is valuable and uh, through that through sharing resharing through community support then you will get to that trust to give you an example if you look at anita if you look at run with pack run with uh, uh uh run with bitcoin by paco if you look at some of the documentaries these are people that are constantly doing work to make their projects initiatives uh, real happen and, and gain support. So um, it's it's something where really the, our model is a long-term project that through time develops recognition, develops trust um, uh, through, through work. And so we don't expect every project to be successful from day one, but through time, through commitment, through effort, um, uh, they will increase as we as we're seeing. So people like that are well recognized, uh, people that we are able to develop that community will grow and will uh, be successful and will get a lot of donations. We believe that's sort of the model. So more long term, develop trust through work and through time, create community tools to enable them to create these associations, these, these strong bonds within the community, um, and uh, and I think we will start seeing a lot, a lot of, um, and actually as we already are, uh, a lot of really big, uh, really big donations, especially if there is some degree of, um, of, of, of recognition, of um, also rewards that are given out through the, um, through the, through, through the projects. And something that also, goes hands in hands with that. Um, Sorry, mate, if you wanted to go with something. Yeah, just to kind of also say that though, the, the all or nothing model is also something that's interesting to us. And we, we, we probably could look at that as well for those types of projects that want to do something a little bit more exciting. I think the, the value of the Kickstarter model is actually is the, the hype element. So what we're working on is the like long-term, what we call um, uh, not, not virality, but vitality. It's like almost keep a, a project vital through time, uh, alive. And, but there's something quite exciting and hype-ish about the viral element of like, you have one month kind of go. And that's something I think has value and we could look into that using smart contracts on Bitcoin as well. Sorry, take it away, Stavios. Yeah, no, beautifully said. Uh, just to complement that, we're, we're also thinking about the real sort of evolution of a project that often kickstarts with an idea. 
but the idea is not often well defined when you begin the project. So one other advantage of having these more long lived projects is that as a creator, they can go through the ideation phase and increase the scope of that project as they go and as their own understanding also of what, what is going to be built or what the community is excited about evolves over time. Uh, and so one idea we're floating around for, for making that possible is essentially for the creator to provide a more concrete goal and a more concrete short-term target that the funders can go towards uh, as they grow the project together. Milestone-based versus dollar-based. Um, okay, so with some of these other platforms, uh, if I'm... Uh, you know, my book or my widget or whatever it is that I'm funding, that comes with uh, a promise of being delivered this item uh, when it's completed. Um, so if I'm going to uh, pledge $25 to Alex Svetsky's book, I think he did a Kickstarter and sold a thousand of them or whatever it was uh, on that platform way back then, that's going to also include uh, everything that they would need to deliver and fulfill that order. So does Geyser have it on the roadmap to do that with your projects now? Because if I'm supporting uh, this hero of Bitcoin game uh, and I click fund this project, I love the fact that it shows the, the contributions on the right and you can have all sorts of fun with gifts and images and messages and things like that. Um, I might not have like my address where I want this item shipped to or my email address or a way to, you know, how are you going to handle that? Is this something that you've thought about before? I can take that quickly. I, I, the, the reason why we haven't allowed a, a funder to add their, their, their postal address to where they can receive the, the good is mainly because of privacy. Um, just concerned with that element. So what we're really doing is we, we're, we're going to, we, our idea is that let's make that peer to peer. Let's let the creator reach back to, to the funder and uh, ask for that address so that it doesn't have to be like sitting on our on our um, on our server. Uh, now we, there are some more peer-to-peer -peer options that we could elicit through that down the road, which is just kind of um, uh, sort of our next step. So to kind of answer your question, yes, that's something that we're going to be uh, solving, um, but in a way that is uh, that is not necessarily um, um, kind of uh, hosted or like uh, you know that we host that information. We want to try to make that. Um, um, kind of privacy preserving, if that makes sense. Sure. All right. So let's dig right in. Enough of all that. So fresh out of the very first uh, Tim Draper Bitcoin uh, accelerator, um, the first time around, uh, how was that experience? Um, how involved are they with your company? Are they offering support uh, post uh, kind of that first cohort? Um, and just generally, how was that experience? So, uh, as a first time founder, it was, it was great. They really supported us from kind of the business, the legal uh, side of things helped us really to onboard into, okay, what does it mean to, 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 to start off with a startup? Um, what, it, uh, what are the, some tools to understand? What are some of the heuristic you should know about? How does it work to kind of fundraise? Um, what are the things you should be aware about? Um, and also very importantly, like the legal stuff. So like they have a great team of, of legal support. And so helping us understand what are the challenges with the custodial? Um, uh, what are some of the, the things that we should be aware of? What are some of the best places where to incorporate? Like oh, these are massive questions uh, for early stage startups. So uh, uh, appreciate the team for helping us out there. And um, yeah, they also put us in touch with some great um, with some great mentors. Um, that we were partnered with with Oleg, uh, who helped us out uh, quite a lot in terms of helping us think through the the early stages on product market fit, um, and then yeah, all the kind of product strategy questions, you know, helping us think through product market fit. Um, uh, what are some of the the you know user research, talking to users, um, MVPing something, making it like uh, launch something quickly and get user feedback right away. So they've been really great at that. And yeah, there's still, we still have these, these communication that's back and forth and we're part of their, their community now. Um, so uh, actually investors can, can uh, uh, invest through their platform um, uh, and um, essentially we're part of this kind of closed in community where we can always ask support, which is really great. 
did they end up taking a uh, small equity position uh, in Geyser? I believe because we went down the safe route, uh, investment through the safe and not through their uh, their investment vehicle, um, we haven't yet. But um, I think I think but in in the next round they'd be interested in, in that. Cool. Um, so, all right. Um, let's go over some of the current advisors um, and the advisors for your grants, right? Which are two separate things. Right. So, um, advising the company, um, you want to just run through everyone here? I'll see if I can't pull up a graphic. Sounds great. Yeah. So, uh, in terms of our current advisors, we have a uh, bread mails, bread mail, uh, who is, um, really helping us out in like business and uh, product strategy, business strategy, uh, and also a, a key, uh, contributor, uh, and and um, uh, mentor when it comes to the the grant, he's uh, he helped us out quite a bit and setting up the grant, connecting us with with some Bitcoiners that would that essentially helped us to um, to, to to contribute to the grant. Um, so yeah, key, key figure Brad Mills. Uh, we then have uh, Zach Shapiro, who's helped as a legal advisor and really helped us out in in, in structuring the company, incorporating. Um, all the kind of stuff that's hard to do, like with lightning custodial stuff, like really, really great, great guy. Um, and in terms of like really helping us uh, think through the, the difficult questions of uh, regulations. We then have Sazal Dulal, he's uh, our tech advisor, um, been really like a key, uh, key person from the very, very get go. He was an early team member and really helped us out in the early stages and helped us uh, build up. Um, the the entire app and help through the, the architecture. So really great guy, like uh, a full stack developer uh, who's been really dedicating a lot of time on Geyser. Um, and then we have uh, Anton who has uh, more than 15 years of experience in the business strategy space and, and, and actually actually developing and building startups from scratch in more the, the marketplace. Uh, kind of uh, uh, e-commerce space. So he's a guy that we often go to to talk about, like uh, you know, in terms of uh, uh, future uh, future product strategy, um, and marketing, uh, and um, when it comes to like the whole um, uh, developing a roadmap. Uh, what are some things that we should think about? And sort of yeah, great great um, uh, advisor when it comes to helping us think through uh, guys are, as a business and the administration stuff as well. And then we have Crypto, Crypto Graffiti, who is a very well-known uh, Bitcoiner, especially in the art space of Bitcoin. He uh, has actually worked as an advisor for all, all, all sorts of other Bitcoin startups. And he's really critical because at Geyser, we see the, the, the I, I we definitely see a role of supporting, contributing to and enhancing the, the creative uh, space in Bitcoin. So I think with him, we can really try to tailor uh, Geyser to the needs of uh, artists and creatives in the space. Uh, as you saw, we have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of um, movies, but there's been a lot of requests from artists to use Geyser as a tool where they can kind of keep their community up to date, uh, launch a project, sell their art on their on Geyser directly. So he's a great guy from a strategy perspective to think through the creatives. Um, that's, that's like something that we really, I think is really important. Um, I think that's it for now in terms of the Geyser ad, ad advisors. And then in terms of the, the grants, we have a board, uh, a group of a board member, uh, including Jack Mozuko. We have Brad Mills as well. We have, um, Desiree Dickinson from Thunder Games. We have, um, uh, uh, Lucas Ferreira from Lightning Labs. And um, I'm, I'm definitely missing some. Um, there you go. Prince as well. Daniel Prince. Daniel Prince yeah, famous Bitcoin educator uh, and podcaster. Connor Ocus working at Spiral, uh, the Bitcoiner, and also Crypto Graffiti. So uh, here the idea is that these are creators that, um, as essentially you know, bit popular Bitcoin uh, personalities that have a very good view of the space, and their task was uh, evaluating the applications. So uh, we we at Geyser went through the initial 80 grant applicants, they did an initial filtering based on 
uh, the quality of the outputs, the sort of impact uh, that they want to have, the needs, like can they get funding somewhere else? Uh, if not, they would be more highly considered. Uh, and um, what are their um, um, yeah, uh, impact and need and um and like recognition right and based on that then the board members would go through the applications and evaluate the 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 grantees and then based on that we would then assign uh give out the, the satoshi so really key and really kind of shows how like you know how this board members have helped to uh, you know how well connected i guess geyser is when it comes to the bitcoin ecosystem and the space all right well let's get to the um bulk of the questions which is how is geyser gonna make money what is up with the monetization strategy um yeah, either either of you whoever wants to take it but um if you want to go over uh how uh geyser does if you want to talk possibly about the premium uh tools and features that might go out for some paid subscribers uh and the big picture vision there um as more of a of a platform totally so you hinted at some of them uh in in a, in the form of a subscription model um but first to take a step back just to say that we are as a non-custodial platform or as a platform that doesn't want to take custody or transmit the funds we are in a position where taking just a fee or a cut on the transactions that occur is not going to be the only monetization model so it will be a possibility for us to take a fee and take a one or two percent but we also see it as a model that sort of belongs to the the old web um and we're seeing it more in the in the framework of the value for value model meaning that for creators that use our platform and are, that are getting the value out of it we want to give them a chance to basically decide how much they will be willing to give as a percentage of what they've earned on the platform. And one of the forms that we can do that is by asking them to pay a monthly subscription based on um, the amount of funds that they've raised in that week or in that month. And through this subscription, they will be able to get some premium features. And that could be in the form of um, offering a newsletter to their, to their followers, the people that subscribe to their projects, or to have some premium uh, analytics insights on their projects um, and just as a more complete uh, tool set for them to, to create uh, more content. I was just gonna add also compared uh, to add to what Stelio said uh, very rightly, we're gonna start off by experimenting with more of a value for value model. We'll have a geyser project on there uh, as well uh, so get people be able to donate and contribute to guys and subscribe to guys as a project itself um, but also the way that we see it as well is that um, we're still uh, like the, the reason why we went non-custodial as a non as a company is because it allows us to be so much more lean so much more uh, like instantly global like we can scale globally we don't have to worry about being a custodian in one country or another country and so we will reap the benefits as first mover in terms of the first mover advantage uh, and also secondly through um, a platform that is like uh, as you in the coming months will be super easy to use um, uh, instantly globally everywhere and so that's sort of our, our approach is we want to be the first kind of content platform on Bitcoin in the world uh, help get onboard people in Bitcoin right away um, use these tools and then yes, initially we will charge through this uh, uh, subscription model through our own project, but eventually the tools will come that will allow us to uh, take a percentage cut of, of, of the funds that are being transferred on our platform. Like the tools will come, it's just that we're very early to that. Um, there already are ways of, for us to do that already. So when we have lightning addresses, we'll have um, uh, submarine swaps, uh, that will occur on our platform. So people that want to fund on on-chain will, will get submarine swapped on Lightning. So that's something that we could already start uh, charging, you know, percentage of, of, of uh, transactions on. Um, and uh, and eventually there, you know, even for uh, Lightning uh, payments through routing fees. So there's many things that we can do. The, the key thing to, to understand is that we are early. Uh, it's a new market. 
uh, with entirely differing monetization game. Like the game on monetization is completely different. And so our, our approach is to, uh, is to really focus on the best possible experience uh, and um, uh, test out some of these different monetization tools. And uh, eventually we will be able to, uh, uh, to, to get rewarded through like actual percentage of, of, money, of, of, of money transmitted. All right, so um, I want to have some fun and then I want to wrap it up with the roadmap, okay? But um, let's see, uh, if I go like this here and I go like this there and I go like that there, okay, there I am. Uh, at least I hope I am. Okay, I'm ready to roll. What are we going to do here? Um, let's see, you know what? I I owe this guy, actually. You would love Between Two Asics, by the way. Have you looked at that project? No, I haven't. Oh my God, you would love it. So that's uh, Tatum from uh, uh, viewers on a Bitcoin mining company. And he wants to do a between two ferns, but on Bitcoin. Oh, wow. The Zach Galifianakis. Uh, love yeah, it. exactly. He already has a uh, pump. He's going to do pump in the next few weeks. He's going to launch uh, uh, the video on Geyser. So every person coming, uh, he will be sending everyone to the Geyser page so that people can watch the YouTube video from Geyser and fund them directly and see the comments. So as you can start to see, we become this sort of social content layer on top of, of content. So in terms of customizing this page from the back end, um, you can embed all sorts of videos and things right in here? Exactly. For sure. Yeah. In fact, when the projects get released, um, we're going to let them create any sorts of entries. So at first, they'll be able to create the post entries, which will look like a blog article. Um, and eventually, we will be adding any type of media content you can think of. So it could be a, a video link. It could be uh, a link to their Twitter profile or their YouTube uh, video or their podcast, really anything you can imagine. All of that content will sit under the project as part of the, of the, of the idea that they're pushing. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead real quick and let's just wrap up with the roadmap. Um, I have it right here. It's really impressive. There's a lot of stuff on here, including normie payments with credit cards and all those sorts of things uh, that work for the 99% of the world. Um, yeah. All right. Do you want to just run through this real quick? It looks like yeah. the first four items are done and you're working on some stuff here. Right. So next up is, as you can see, projects. That's, that's, that's essentially what we talked about before. Uh, currently, projects are static. We're going to make them dynamic by allowing creators to add uh, content, create posts. Um, we will. Oh, the grants winner reveal is actually done. We then have the crowdfunding creation flow release. Um, the creation flow release uh, will be ca happening uh, also in the next uh, couple of weeks. Next uh, should be coming up uh, probably uh, next week, maybe in the week after that. And then uh, we then have after that, we'll be launching Geyser project launch. That's really us launching our own project on Geyser and getting starting to use, get our community to use Geyser and, and uh, um, kind of connect there. Uh, that's what we'll be launching our own uh, releases and our updates. Uh, subscriptions allow users to subscribe to a project um, and uh, it's essentially that's a bit like it's a bit like Substack where you can subscribe to a project but the creator will be able to um, uh, will be able to decide if they want people to pay to, to subscribe with Satoshi so like um, you know maybe subscribing is free maybe you can actually do a bit like Patreon and say okay you can only be a subscriber if you pay a hundred or a thousand or a million satoshis, kind of really up to you. We then have creator custodial addresses. Um, so that's that goes back to the uh, lightning addresses, actually. So creators be able to create projects using their lightning addresses. That's something that uh, probably more towards the end of October, actually, but it's coming. Uh, badges. So that's something that we're looking at a lot. So um, the key problem of, of badges is that we want to be able to reward funders a lot more and making them be able to feel like they are part of this community that they've been recognized and rewarded for funding a project. So badges are going to be uh, very key and we're looking at ways to make it so that they're interoperable with other platforms as well. So not just badges that are badges that are on our server, but badges that can be used across platforms. So we're looking at, at, at ways to do that using uh, Nostr protocol and, and other or other other tools. 
uh, project tags to enable greater discovery uh, and, exp uh, and discovery uh, experience. Um, SAS drops, uh, something that we're also thinking about, basically be able to uh, actually uh, um, uh, incentivize our most active users by dropping SATs on them. Essentially, uh, once we're able to take a cut, we'll be able to um, uh, give back to our users, uh, our most active users, uh, a bit like think of a, a stacker news. Um, although that's probably a little bit further down the road. Um, then we have chat. Uh, so that's something. This is we're we're starting to get into the 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 the, uh, the, the maybes perhaps, but definitely chat is something that we're looking at very carefully, um, and we can again think about ways to do that uh, in, a, in a peer to peer peer sort of way that is actually really easy to integrate, um, matching donations. So in allowing uh, users to receive satoshis. Uh, so essentially using the grants to match people dropping sats to projects. So if you're uh, a specific type of project and you're getting a thousand sats uh, from a creator, we'll be able to match that using the money from the grants. So in a way to kind of enhance uh, uh, the, 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 the um, um, kind of the, 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 the interest and like enhance certain projects that fit certain criteria. Um, uh, Matt, uh, Fiat on ramp, so that's that's really really powerful and it's really allowing people to create to fund projects uh, using their credit cards, uh, and we can you know use <laughs> you pay with credit card from anywhere you want, probably most likely in the West, and then we'll be able to bring that into like on chain and then submarine swap that onto Lightning. So that's sort of the idea there, um, and then newsletters. Uh, again, that's actually connected to the subscriptions, so it should have been higher up. Um, and then fund specific items, what we were talking about earlier, where you can fund a specific thing. You can say, hey, I love um, I love this book, uh, I, or I, I love uh, Run, with Bit Run With Bitcoin's project, and I want to fund his uh, airport ride to go to El Salvador, right? So you can fund a specific item. So that's sort of the idea at the moment. And there's definitely a lot more. These are the, the ones that we feel uh, you know that will definitely happen next next uh, around three months. Very cool. All right. So, final question: uh, What are you most excited about uh, for the future of Geyser and uh, coming up in the next the next uh, the the next big launch that you're the most excited about? And let's start with Stelios. I think. For, for answering that question, we need to go back to the basics of why does Geyser exist and why are we excited about it, about building a crowdfunding platform that uses Bitcoin and the Lightning Network. And the answer there is crowdfunding is a financial tool that is available mostly in the West. It's a financial tool that is still not available throughout the entire world. And using Lightning, we're able to bring this to everyone, to everyone in the emerging markets and to allow the communication to happen freely. That's something I think all Bitcoiners are really excited about and really hold uh, close to their heart. And that is free speech, free communication and free exchange of value. And so to think about crowdfunding as a tool that is not available to everyone, is a problem that we are solving. It's a problem that we hold close to our heart as well. And so what we're really excited moving forward is making this tool more accessible to everyone through the roadmap that we've described, but also through being closer to the creators in the regions that we want to expand in. And so one, one aspect that we're thinking about doing that with is to reach out to community members in existing communities, such as the Bitcoin beaches, um, the, yeah, the Bitcoin beaches in El Salvador and other instances of such grassroots movement so that we can be fostering and encouraging these movements to start up everywhere in the world and not just speak about global adoption, but actually pushing and enabling global adoption, um, making this more accessible to people that are not technical, that may have less of an understanding of how to run a node or how to manage their liquidity like we just uh, we just saw and doing that uh through par different partnerships as well that maybe make can say a bit more about 
Right. So uh, I agree with Stelios. Uh, what I'm personally also excited about is uh, just being able to open up Geyser to the world. Uh, it's it's coming really soon and it allow anyone um, to, okay, perhaps not, a, not super easily yet, but to run their own project and, and get started. And this will probably most likely be more, more Bitcoin projects. Um, and uh, going towards Lightning addresses that I'm also very excited about because it will en enable uh, usability and really make it even e a lot easier to create these projects um, for, for, for Bitcoiners. Um, and then what Asadios, I think he's referring to is the, the ability to kind of essentially use Geyser from other apps. So this is not happening really soon, but uh, as you've started to see, there are several Bitcoin wallets that uh, operate like apps like app stores with different applications and Geyser is features currently in, um, in Breeze and uh, Blixed wallets. But um, we're, we're, we're really excited. It's kind of uh, probably probably not worth saying actually at the moment because it's still it's still in the development, but we, we could be featured in some pretty big, uh, big wallets moving forward that are essentially targeting communities globally grassroots communities globally. And if that really were to happen, we really can become the tool for people anywhere, everywhere to um, uh, in, in Bitcoin communities to really give them a voice, to tell their stories, to, to crowdfund using Geyser. So that's something that we're really, really, really excited about. Um, but uh, I think also in terms of our, our search, like in the next year, we're gonna be building a lot, but also we're gonna be searching a lot. And we're gonna be really starting to, to think deeply, how can we scale this to the world? Like we also want to make this as seamless and uh, uh, as possible so that you don't even need to think about uh, Bitcoin to receive funds. So that's what we're gonna be thinking about in the coming year to make it even more seamless to just create a project using, using Geyser. Awesome. All right. Well, that does it for uh, for our Lightning Ventures uh, Syndicate founder interview uh, with Mick and Stelios of Geyser.Fund. So um, get out there, kick the tires, play around. Hopefully there's enough inbound liquidity uh, when you start supporting some of these uh, these awesome projects. And um, thanks for hanging out today. Thank you. Thanks, Mike.